Hi there, Sandra here from The Chauvin's Nest. Thanks for joining me today. My projects today are quick and easy and I hope you love them. This first one is with three of these thrifted frames that I found for $1.99. They were part of my last haul. I just thought the lines and the details were absolutely beautiful. So what I'm going to do first is paint all three of them with a couple coats of my DIY chalk paint. If you're interested in learning how to make that chalk paint, I have a recipe down in my description box. I thought about a few different ways to distress this. I could use some dark wax or I could use some sandpaper, but I decided just to take my Cricut spatula here. You could use any type of metal scraping tool and just go ahead and scrape the paint off where I wanted the original gold and dark brown to show through. I learned this technique from Jamie over at Simple Roots Simple Living and she uses a paint scraper. It's a really fun tool. I've never seen it before and I think I'm probably going to get myself one because she uses it on wood as well and that just gives it a really chippy look. So if you're not familiar with Jamie over at Simple Roots Simple Living, I'm going to have her channel link down in my description box. Using my computer and the Google Drawing program and Pixabay for free images, I created some printables that I'm going to print off on white cardstock and then just use a glue stick to glue them onto the original backing of the frame. I create a lot of my free printables in Google Drawing, so if you're interested in learning how to use that program, I just launched a tutorial a couple of days ago, and I'll have it linked down in my description box. I printed these out on white cardstock, and I love using my paper trimmer just to make sure that I get a nice straight line. Sometimes when I'm using my scissors, I get a little wonky, so having this type of tool is really handy when you're doing paper crafts. Once I have the glue applied and my paper stuck on the backing, I'm just going to tack it into the frame with a few dots of hot glue in the four corners and then I'm going to use a generous amount of hot glue all the way around the backing to make sure that it's securely into the frame. When I use hot glue, I like to make sure that I hold it down a little bit because I want this cardboard to adhere to the sides of the frame. And with applying a whole bunch of hot glue, sometimes it's best just to hold it down and wait for that glue to set a bit and then move on to the next part. I had three of these frames, so I did a different flower for each frame, and I put the labels of two of the flowers inside using just a Sharpie fine tip marker, and I just hand wrote it in. But you'll have to let me know if you know what the third flower is, because I couldn't find anything similar to it online. So if you know what it is, let me know, because I'd love to be able to make this a matching set. I'd like to take a quick second and thank all of my current subscribers. I love you guys. I truly appreciate each and every one of you for subscribing, for watching my videos, and helping me grow my channel. If you're new and you'd like what you see, I would love it if you could hit that red button too. I upcycle a lot of canisters and teapots and things that have a shiny surface, so the first thing I like to do is give them a coat of matte clear finish by Rust-Oleum, and that just helps the paint stick a lot better. I'm giving this piece one quick coat of my DIY chalk paint in white. I have done the baking soda mixture paint on a bunch of different projects before, but I realized today that I've never used white paint. I've always done a colored paint. So I was really excited to try it with the white. So I put a decent amount of the baking soda into my paint. 
I would say it might have even been a half and half kind of, or maybe just a little bit extra paint. You can always just work with the texture and see how you like it. But this turns out really nice and thick, and that's what I was looking for. I'm just going to use a small brush and go ahead and add all of this onto my canister, making sure I get the rim and inside the rim a little bit as well. Once the paint was completely dry, I'm using this home decor clear wax and I like to use clear wax because then I can tint it any color I want rather than going and buying black wax, white wax, brown wax. So it just makes it go a lot further. What I'm adding to this wax is a little dot of Parisian gray chalk paint. I just want this to have sort of a gray beigey kind of look and it turned out perfect. I'm adding the wax mixture just to the label portion of the canister. I didn't want to do anything else with it. I wanted just that label and the scroll work around it to pop. So I'm going to add a generous amount of the wax, making sure I get into all the little cracks and nooks and crannies. And then I'm going to take a paper towel and just dab off the excess. If you try this technique, just make sure when you're going around the edges where the scroll is that you take a clean section of the paper towel because you don't want to reapply that wax onto the rest of the canister. I decided to go a little out of my comfort zone and use some of this purple delphinium instead of lavender. I also used some of these other little purple flowers from the Dollar Tree, but they were little short stems. So I added them onto some larger stems that I always have in my stash and I keep. So that way I can make the flowers the length I want them to be. When I create my flower arrangements, I like to start with the main floral first. But in this instance, I'm using these upright greenery stems that I wanted to have kind of in between all of the florals. So I needed to add these in first. Then I'm going to add the delphinium all the way around, making sure that I'm working with odd numbered pieces like three, five, seven, nine. And then at the end, I'm going to just fill in all of the gaps with those little dark purple flowers from the Dollar Tree. I decided to add some different colored florals to each of the other two canisters because I'll be selling these as individual pieces. I think they turned out really pretty. Let me know what you think. If you like what you see so far, I would really appreciate you hitting that thumbs up button. That gets me noticed more on YouTube and helps my channel grow. And I'll also know that you like this type of content and I'll create more in the future. For this project, I wanted to use this jug that I've had. I got it for $2 at the thrift store quite a few years ago. I had done something to it, but of course I'm going to revamp it and make something new. I'm taking some of this really large nautical rope that I get at my local Dollarama store. I think I have seen it at Dollar Tree as well, but I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, this is much thicker than the regular jute rope that you can get. And what I'm doing here is just going to start gluing it all the way around. I end up using almost two of these coils. I think they're about nine feet in length. And as I did this, because it's a cotton rope, I was able to stretch it a little bit and make it look not so fat. I just went around and kept adding the rope until I got about halfway up the jug. And I made sure when I stopped that it would be in the same area as where I started. So all of my seams and connections would be in the same spot. 
I made a quick little tassel with some of the leftover rope and added a few beads to the top of it. And I'm sure you've seen tons of people make tassels. So I thought I would show you what I'm doing with these corks. <laughs> I wanted to make a hole through them so I could string them together. I wanted this to be kind of like an old fashioned French wine jug. So I just used a really big fat needle to pound it through. And then I'm just using my needle nose pliers here to kind of twist it and pull the nail back out. I have some cotton twine here that I'm going to feed through a large darning needle and that's going to fit right through the corks. I wanted to give a shout out to Kimberly who has sent me a ton of different items for huge boxes of craft supplies. This rope and some of the florals that I used in my projects today came from her. So thank you so much, Kimberly. I truly appreciate everything that you sent me and I couldn't be more happier with all of the extra craft supplies I have. So I threaded the needle through the first cork with a double strand of the twine and you saw there I had to use my pliers to just kind of pull it through because it's a little bit thicker where the twine starts or the cotton rope starts so you do need a little bit of something extra to give you some force to pull that out. I'm going to tie on one of these little wooden tags that came in a bunch from the Dollar Tree and then I'm going to add a pretty little vintage French farmhouse wine label. I got this one from the Graphics Fairy, so I'll have the link to it down in my description box. The Graphics Fairy is also another wonderful place to get some free printables if you're not comfortable making some of them on your own. I'm just going to cut this out and it's about just over the size of the tag because I want to be able to sand it down and give it a really rough texture. I'm just going to use my glue stick to attach it on and then I'll use my sanding block to give it a really beautiful vintage look. Once I got all the excess paper off, I took the sanding block again and went over all of the edges one more time, especially the corners, just to sand off some of that paper, make it look like the label had been around for a long time and was starting to wear off the edges. I tied the tag onto the handle of the jug just like I did with the beads and I did use a tiny little bit of hot glue just to hold the corks in place because they kept wanting to go to the back and the label was all wonky. Let me know what you think of this project. I hope you enjoyed my take on some French country trash to treasure projects. And if you did, here's a couple more you might like as well. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one.